Have you talked to your kids about sex yet? All of that here on the Brave Talk Show. Hey, brave girl, how you do the things that you do? I'm Vanessa. I'm Teresa. Hello, I'm Robin. And I'm Brittany. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. And a little disclaimer, we will be talking about some adult conversations today. So ladies, if you need to put your headphones on so that you can listen and participate, this is your time. Today we are talking about educating our children on sex. When you talk about it, what's appropriate, and all the things. But first, it's two minutes of Hot Topic. Megan Markle, oh. let's go. Let's go. All Who's right. Up? Okay, so what do you guys think? I am totally willing to air all of my family's dirty laundry <laughs> for $7 million. Yes. Just going to say that. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> totally willing to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Seven mil. I think the conversation needed to happen because, you know, the world is very kind of like, closed door, private, and everything. And since she came out and she was honest, and I think we, in reality, we see the royal and we think like they're untouchable. People like that don't deal with everyday life, but she dealt with everyday life with mental health, racism against her and her child, so. You know, it's interesting that you say that about like not assuming that they don't, because one of the things that I saw online um, that people were kind of making fun of was here's this rich princess in her big mansion with all of her money complaining about racism. And I think their, their comment was really to imply that if you have money, therefore we don't live in a racist world. Yeah. And you know, for a second there when that, when that came out, I thought, oh, that's an interesting argument. What do I think about that? And I, because I, I wasn't really sure. I'm like, that, that kind of makes sense, but there's something in it that just didn't sit right with me. Mm -hmm. So I reached out actually to one of my friends who's just, I, I just trust him. He's just, he's, I can be honest with him and he can just tell me like, this is where you're off. And I told him what I just told you now. And he let me know like, classism and racism, two different things. Yes. And there's crossover. Mm -hmm. There's certainly crossover, yeah. but there are areas where you can have one and not the other. Mm -hmm. And you can certainly have someone who has benefited from classism but still experiences racism in their own life. And money come with its own problems. Yes. Like having money come with its own problem. And then we don't deal with paparazzi because we're not like that, but I feel like that has to be hard everywhere you go to have a camera in your face. Your life is not your own. I know one part of the interview she said, when I became part of the family, she turned in her phone, she turned in her keys, she turned in her ID, her credit card, her debit, everything. She doesn't make decisions on how she lives her life. They kind of tell you, this is your house. This is where you're gonna stay. This is you do what the queen requires of you. Like, how would we feel? Sounds like prison. <laughs> and is it worth the money? No. Is it worth it? All that. They they obviously don't think it is. Is yeah. she not one brave girl? Seriously, brave, brave girl. Yes. That takes a lot to go against. Like, not only just like anyone who's making it, but like the queen. The queen. The queen. The mm -hmm. queen, literally. And they have a great mm -hmm. relationship with the queen. They did say that. The queen and the, the grandpa, they do have a great relationship. It sounds like it's more like the dad, you know, Prince Harry's dad, Prince Charles, and then Prince William and Kate is where the most of the issue is coming from. So mm. we'll have to see how that end goes. Eh? So what do you guys think? Weigh in. Weigh in on this topic. Comment below. What do you think of Meghan Markle in that interview? $7 million. Would you do Seven it? Seven million. I would. <laughs> but I have to ask you guys. When did you guys get the sex talk? Fifth grade at school. Okay. <laughs> I feel like um, I got it. I got it right before I got married. I was engaged. What? And literally, my right mom, before you got married? Right before I got married. My mom How told old were you? Me, Hold on, how old are you? So I was 22. Wow. Um, my mom just said, I'm not sure you're going to like it. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> like, and then it continued for a little bit, but that, that, was, that was the extent of it. Wait, okay, I have to ask. So that's the first time you had the talk, but did you already, have it, did you already know about it prior to that, or was this like you had no idea that this thing existed? No, I knew I, I knew sex existed before I was <laughs> yeah. so, you, so you learned that from somebody oh, else. Oh, yeah, like Maury Povich, was, and they were always on my grandparents' TV, actually. My yeah. grandparents were big talk show people, and so every time I would go over there, I'd be like, you know, listening and being like, oh, what are, what, what, what are they talking about? This is scandalous. Like, I can't watch this at home. I'm going to watch it at my grandparents. I was like, yeah. yeah. But, so that's really, and I started, I, don't, I was older, you guys, when I realized the mechanics of sex, though. Yeah. I'm not going to Mine going that. from a different culture, growing up in Haiti till I was 13, it's not really a conversation. I think parents, I think you're living in a world of really your poverty, and that's like, like not the number one thing you talk about, but I just remember my mom being like, don't have sex. And that was it, like. 
Yeah. Boys are boys are not the way to do it. And when you, know? you heard that, did you know what she was talking about? I think so. I think you already have the idea. I think I think the world is so sexualized. So it's hard mm -hmm. to even like my I look at my little kids, like my little boy, he know what kissing is and he watched Nick Jr. Like, you know, he knows like, oh, that's a romantic thing, you know. So I think life is like media is so sexualized nowadays even back Back then, in eighty nine, so. you guys, I was I didn't even Let's just say on my first night of marriage, I didn't even know what a penis and balls looked like or that it were what? two different things. Yes, I had no sex education. I never got like the anatomical parts. Like we so call we call it a vagina. <laughs> we call, like, I thought this was called my vajay jiggly bop bop. And, <laughs> and that the boys were jiggly bop nodders. Like I'm not <laughs> kidding. And so I never had to talk like anatomically how sex worked. I think I kind of figured out like growing up in junior high, high school that like, that. you know, Pretty sex. Pop, pop. And then I remember my sister like told me what it was and I was like, what? No. And it was like a one time thing. And then no sex education yeah. after that. Wow. And I think this, you're not the only one. No, I am not like the only one. Yeah, audience. you're yeah. not the only one. I've worked in places where I have teenagers and they don't know like what the name is. And one thing that I, is really important for me with my kids I start young because we live in a world also that's a crazy world. You know, you're not the only one that's around your kid. Other people are. Yeah. So the big, one thing my husband and I agree on is like we are going to teach our kid the proper name of their body parts. Same. We do that the was same. that important to me. So it's just like this is not like you say sounds cool, right? Yeah. Bop, bop, but you know, it's like, like, like bop, bop, we should bop. be comfortable even with our boys. Like that's her vagina and yeah. that's her private part. And we make sure we make sure we let our kids know it's private and it's private to you. You know, mommy, every now and then, if there's something's hurting, I can come and look and make sure. But if you ever feel uncomfortable, you tell me because yeah. this is That's your great. private. Yeah. Part. And mm -hmm. Vanessa, you probably know this working in, you know, the social work and me and sexual assault. But mm. your kids need to know the anatomical names yes. of their private part in case they are ever assaulted, assaulted. or abused. Um, it's a lot harder to prosecute people when when you say the kid says they touched my special spot. But if your kid can say I was touched in the vagina. That's a lot stronger. Yeah. Right? I had a story yeah. like that. Exactly yeah. like that. The girl was sexually assaulted. She would come home and tell her mom, my teacher, my gym teacher is touching my cookie. And she's like, what? She's like, yeah, touching my cookie. And then, that was their code name. That was word. the code name, but the mom hadn't registered, like, even because they made it up, hadn't registered. And then she was helping her take a bath. And she's like, mommy, my cookie, my teacher touched my cookie. And the mom oh was like, no. what oh the no, heck? No, no, no. You know, because that was kind of like, so that's why it is important to teach your kid, you know, so right. they yeah. can communicate yeah. that. I also yeah. think it takes out a lot of the shame. Like that is your penis, your vagina, just the same as is it your yes. elbow or your eye. Like yes. I wasn't allowed to say wiener growing up or vagina or penis. So when those words were, I heard those words or I said those, there was so much shame and this is naughty, this yes. is bad. Like my kids, like it's no big deal. They're like, mom, yeah. I need to wash my vagina in the shower. Like it's, <laughs> it's no big deal. It's yeah. like a part of your body. And we yeah. need to. We need to. In the yeah. culture that we're in right now, it's just like, like I said, your Utah culture, we have to make sure that the normalizing, is that what we said now? We yeah. normalize that we talk about those things. Like it's yeah. okay that somebody said vagina. We don't have to be like, shh. <sighs> like, of course, know your place. Know your place. Right. But yeah. don't you think <laughs> it's connected too, where if a girl feels confident saying my vagina and she's not she doesn't feel that shame saying it out loud that she's also going to be more confident in telling a boy no yes, yes. yes. absolutely yes. that confidence is tied to each mm -hmm. other i feel yeah. like well yeah and also the confidence but also the shame if she's shamed about saying the word vagina and she's sexually assaulted or abused it's going to be a lot harder to tell someone yeah. she's been touching the vagina like especially when the prosecutor i was in a trial one time and i watch it and he keeps saying the words like his penis, and then the girl wasn't used to it, and you can tell like she was she's just like, like she's like, and you can tell yeah. like, and then the jury's looking at that and being like, what the heck, like you know, yeah. and that's that's my thing. I feel like you have to teach your children that, and then the next thing is consent. Mm -hmm. You have to teach your kids consent. So what we're finding though is like it seems like a lot of you guys didn't get this lesson, and my question is, did you not get it in school? Because I know I come from California, and it's like standard. Uh, and, and I don't know, I think it starts, it's, it started for me in fifth grade, that's when I learned. I learned it from fifth grade <laughs> from school. And then you got it again like in middle school and then you got some more in high school and so forth. Now they're, they're moving earlier mm -hmm. and we can talk about that, but my question was like, were you guys homeschooled or something? Or does, does Utah education not? We had a maturation <laughs> program. But that's nothing about sex. I had a class in high school. I remember in mm -hmm. high school our health book literally had the page ripped out where it shows really? the anatomical 
Like, I legitimately did not know what a penis looks like. Oh, wow. Like, I it had was it in taken high school. out yeah. of oh, our book. Wow. Hmm. It was taken out of our book. Yeah, we had it in high school. We had a health class, and I remember the teacher, but the banana, pass out condoms. No, we didn't it have that. It was like a two-day thing, maybe yeah. a one-day thing, where you had to have a permission slip signed. Yeah, your parents had, yeah, your parents was, had to it sign it. very quick, very, yeah. it wasn't, yeah, It wasn't, it was like, detail. Like, maybe my go. parents didn't talk, They talked a little bit about... Yeah. D like disease, like, you know, like STD. Ours was like a week long thing. It was a process. Yeah, your parents had to sign it. And then the teacher goes into detail, talk about STDs. So high pregnancy. school, pregnancy. So high school is why I got like the bulk of it. And I think it's great because, but then you were sitting in the classroom. Like I work with teenagers right now uh, as a social worker. And we try to teach class because my goal with our kids is to teach them to transition and leaving. And some of them doesn't know about sex. But I can see them sometime in the class the watching them and seeing them and you talking and some of them will log off because they don't want to talk about sex. They get uncomfortable mm -hmm. talking about it. Mm -hmm. And so I think even though the school are trying, I think Utah has gotten rid of it altogether. But because it's not teaching the school, we have to teach it in the home. And I think that was one of our polls. Well, what would we be put. your preference? Would you guys rather be in charge of teaching sex education or would you rather the school? For me, I would rather myself because I feel like then I'm giving them um, enough because I also you don't want to teach your kids I think Teresa have a story coming up but you don't want to overdo it like you start mm -hmm. basic development by age that's how much they can take trying to explain to an eight years old about extra more like just a funny story once again my husband gonna kill me but I feel like our kids when we do it during the day they know because the doors lock and they're knocking yes. and they walk in they're like what you guys doing in here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're like, like something. I know going something. On. You know, something yeah. just happened <laughs> because we've talked about it. Like you know, we love each other, and when as life progressed, there's things that adults do mm -hmm. that you may not understand now, but you, you will later. One thing in there right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That one thing. But my son came to us and asked us one time. He's like, "How did I get in your belly?" And I think remember he was like eight, and I was just like, "Okay, we have to explain this in a way where it's yeah. not gonna be scary, but in a way of like." You know, people that love each other mm -hmm. come make the decision to have beautiful children and we're connected. And, you know, I will tell you more, but it is more of an intimacy that is for adults and understanding that's what happened. And he I was like, I think that's okay. perfect. And you didn't give like the actual anatomy yeah, yet, but you were straightforward and honest. Like, yeah. I literally thought like babies just grew in bellies. And so I <laughs> vowed that like my kids would never learn that. So, same mm -hmm. thing. My daughter came to me when I was pregnant with my baby last year. She's eight and she said, Mom, how do the babies come out? And I was like, oh shoot, I have one try to make this good. And I just was straight fact. I'm like, oh, the baby's gonna come out of my vagina. And she was just like, okay. Yeah. Like straight facts. She yeah. didn't care. No mm -hmm. emotions attached it's to it. It's interesting that you say the age eight because we've already had the sex talk with my kids, but sometimes I think they just need to hear it a few times. They'll forget, oh, yeah. they just don't sure. understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the same thing, my eight year old just last week was like wanted to understand again like he already knows yeah. but like i think he just well he knows how babies are made but i think he just needed to better More understand how the babies come out yeah. right and so i use the exact same language you know the baby comes out of the vagina and he was like mom you just said this and the, i think the reason why is because like the kids have used body potty language at the dinner table which we have said <laughs> that is not appropriate yeah, right. and my kids have internalized that as it's not appropriate to talk about bodies at Ever. any point and i have to remind them no it's like there's there's a places, place. like yeah. not at the dinner table, you know? Right, so when yeah. he does that, I just looked at him, I'm like, yeah, comes out of her vagina, vagina, vagina. That's what I said. <laughs> and, he, and, you know, I'm like, you just have to accept that, you know? So, you know, I had to just kind of sh shock it out of him. But it is an interesting time. They, they do ask these questions at the appropriate time. And, and instead of shunning them and saying, we'll talk about it later or this, like, that's a good time. And it's funny because when we first showed up, both Brittany and I were like, I've got a book. <laughs> I've got a book I want to bring to the show. And I'm like, I've got a book too. That's awesome. And then we both walked in. Okay. These ones are mine. Yeah. Ones are yours. We both walked in. Boom. And um, it's the yes. same collection of books. And it totally match is talking about what we're talking about right now. And um, Brittany, you can share where you found it and what you've gone through. But the gist of it is that these are four books for four different age levels yeah. for your kids. Definitely. So there's ages three to five, five to eight, eight to 11, and 11 to 14. And each one gives enough information that's appropriate for your kid at that level. And then it goes it goes deeper on the other ones. Yeah. And you know, you'd have to decide as an adult, you know, as a parent, if you if you feel like your kid is ready for the next book before the numbers say so. I mean, you know your kid's maturity more than anybody does. But at least it's, you know, you have some options there. Um, and you know, it doesn't get into, I think, some of the things that are still left to talk about that you might want to talk with them, you know, before they get married or they start, I don't know, dating or something like to that extent. 
but I mean, you get it from beginning to end for sure. I love that it's a gateway. So a lot of people are saying like, how do I just teach my kid? It's not like out of the blue, he comes home from school and he's like, hey, little Joey, today we're talking about sex. Like just start with a book and then the conversation will come naturally. Your kids will be like, well, yeah. mom, what about this? So like, I have so many friends who are like, I just don't know like when to approach it. I'm like, don't like just read a book and then the conversation and will it's naturally a question. flow. I think it's also when you're watching TV, it's, it's right there in our right. face and they're like, I remember sometimes like you watch TV back in the day and your parents would cover your eyes when people are kissing. Like, yeah, you know, like time. that, it's just kind of like kissing is okay. It's explaining to the child. So for me, like, of course, I, we don't watch crazy, but if you like somebody kissing, like kids are like, ew, and I'm like, no, it's just two people, yeah. you know, that cares. Like explaining it instead of like shaming it. And right. I think each conversation then becomes slowly. I think it should be something that started when they're young mm -hmm. and going by, you know, mm -hmm. age appropriateness, you know, instead of like, Here's all this information. Take it and leave it, and that's it. I think you know? it's also important to when your kids start having those feelings to like acknowledge them. Cause like I was always like, I can never date boys. I never want my mom to know I like a boy. So like my little girl who's eight this year, she came home and was like, Oh my gosh, this boy likes me, and like, ooh, gross. And I was like, No, that's awesome. Like you're gonna yeah. start having those feelings, and like, do you like anyone? Like, let's should we get a Valentine? And she was yeah. like, I'm allowed to like someone. I'm like, Yeah, because mm -hmm. eventually you're gonna marry someone. And so like awesome. that's super awesome. So like validate those feelings, and then be like, Those are good. And those are right. Them. And instead that's, of being yeah, like, ooh, yeah. you like boys, like my husband sometimes, yeah. he'll he'll tell me, like, he'll probably be mad I said this, but he's always like teasing my daughter, like, ooh, do you like a boy? I'm like, don't tease her for that. Because one, she'll never want to come to us again. And yeah. two, like, I want her to like boys. So yeah. like, let's foster that. Yeah, right, right. Well, so you asked the question, would you rather the school teach it or you teach it or somebody else teach it? And so here's the reason why I want to teach it is because I want to foster that relationship with my kid. Yes. I want to know I want them to know that it's a comfortable topic for us and so then they come back to me when they start having those puberty feelings where they're attracted to to somebody People. and then they're mm -hmm. they're wanting to go there I need that door to be open and if I don't start that conversation with them then that they assume the door is closed even though I'm like no the door's open it's been open yeah. the whole time they're like but you never talked about it and they might find a door open somewhere else with a friend That's exactly, exactly. Somebody, yeah. somebody's exactly. gonna teach them and I want mm -hmm. it to be me and I want that relationship where it's an ongoing thing yeah. where they can keep coming yeah. to Yeah, and for me, if I can give advice, one last thing in that home thing, working with teenagers and seeing it, that relationship with a parent, that open relationship, like having to know when you're a mom and when you're a friend, is the number one thing that can help your kids in the long term, especially even like the sexual relationship, because when they feel like they've done something and they feel like they have that relationship with mom where they can be like, hey, this is how I'm feeling, this is what's happening, they're more likely to come to you where if it's there's a closed door and they're not be able to come to you, yes, they do go to the friend. They do go to somebody else, and that person educate them totally different. And they will never come to you and let you know. But I've seen both where the parents is involved, they have a relationship, and the parents doesn't shame them. They have that relationship. Like, we all would want our kids to wait and make it special, but if they don't, they have that outlet to be mm -hmm. like, this is what just happened, this is what I'm feeling, what we recommend. And then... Always stop. Like one thing we always teach our parents when we do parenting class, when I can't come to you with anything crazy, take a minute, take a deep breath. You can even be like, okay, let's talk about it. Because your first reaction will be what will set the next when something else comes up. That's good yeah. advice. That is good. Advice. So let's say I asked you guys all to come to a professional dance class with me because I would consider myself a professional dancer. What would you guys feel? Yes. I would say cool. Or you might feel like anxious, nervous. Can I go in the back? A little like <laughs> unsure about no, it, right? Now let's front. say you were dance all room. professional dancers and I said, let's go to a class. How would you feel? Then I'd be like, I don't, I'm going to teach that Excited, class. Excited, confident. You know, it's, it's the same thing about topics. And I teach this in self-defense and it goes hand in hand with sex education. The more you're talking about these things, the more you grow confidence and your kids. Yes. So you might get to where you're old and your kids come to you and say, Mom, I never felt comfortable about coming to tell you about this sexual experience. You might sit there and be like, well, I was totally open to talk about that, but I, as the parent, never talked about it. Yeah. So they're like, my mom doesn't talk about those kind of things, even though you're willing and waiting, but like you have to be the one in your house to yeah. start these conversations. Mm -hmm. So then they're like, oh, that. my mom, she's cool to talk about this. She's not going to freak out. Like you have to be the one talking about it so they don't feel nervous and yeah. anxious. And I yeah. think, you know, we're, I think a lot of parents are, and I, 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 I can understand that. Like I have a 14 year old, we've talked about sex before in the past, but I have to admit like, where I think the angst I think can come sometimes with those types of conversations is because, you know, you're afraid. You, you 
you, you want to be that person, but you don't want them to do these things. Um, and, and there's this like, well, how do I, how do I tell them I don't want them to do this thing, but do it in a way that isn't awkward or that they understand and that they listen to me. And so I think a lot of parents, because it's just so awkward, they end up avoiding it. I know from my, like my experience as a kid, um, my, you know, I got all the talk, right? And I was definitely taught from an early age, like you save yourself to your marriage. Um, there's no, you know, you, you don't make any, no making out because making out leads to sex <laughs> and therefore there's no making out. And you know, that's it, all right? So I, I made out with my, my boyfriend at age 15. And um, I, I did not know, my mom never, my mom and dad never taught me this to me, but I did not know that making out was gonna make me feel aroused. Mm. And you know you hear you hear about you hear about like I've heard about orgasm and those types of things when I was learning about sex but what I wish so much that my mom had said to me was something like the reason why we don't want you making out is because when you make out you're going to feel these feelings that are going to be so intense and you're going to love it okay and it's going to feel like love it's going to feel like love to you and it's that's going to make it sometimes it, it's so strong it's hard to stop it and then it goes you go further and then you you have sex and that's why we want to protect you from that so we we really would, don't want you doing that so what happened with me is i knew i wasn't supposed to be making out but i didn't know what happened when you made out like i didn't know what the effects were mm. and i i started feeling these feelings and i i genuinely started feeling like i love him this mm. i thought i didn't know this was just horny like right. I didn't know. I, I thought this was love. Oh my gosh, I love him. And he loves me. This is amazing. Yeah. And I want to marry him. And therefore, because we're going to get married, because he obviously loves me, because look at us, right? This is magical and beautiful and wonderful. And I slept with him. I was 15 years old. Wow. And my life totally changed after that. I sunk into depression. All the weird, crazy stuff that happens when a 15-year-old girl is having sex because she shouldn't be. She's not mentally able to handle that. And I'm not blaming my parents because... Mm -hmm. A, a totally in a sense because I know that there were many layers like I had daddy issues I, all I really wanted was a boy's attention there were so many different layers to it but I have to wonder if someone had sat me down and said this is what you're going to feel when mm -hmm. you're making out this is what's going to feel like don't fall for it you can have that feeling with anybody that you mm -hmm. made out with I love that. right I love it's that. not actually what love is so Does that's your you know, body reacting. So, if you, you know, so, don't, yeah. so don't make out. Yeah. And if you find yourself catching yourself doing that, know that that's what that is and, and, and cut it off because you know that it's going to, it can become overwhelming. Oh you my know? gosh, Something I'm like that. My kids, that. thank you. You're Great welcome. Job. That was yeah, amazing. Yeah, my little guy, <laughs> sounds so weird. You know when little kids get up and they have like the little boner and stuff? Like he didn't know what that is. Of course he's four, so he's like, what is that, mom? Like, <laughs> why is it standing like that? So explaining to him just to like his body reaction. Like, you know what I mean? Because... That's going to happen for boys. Like, we're talking about the female, but for a little young boy, when they start older and dating and kissing, that can happen. Yeah. And that's an embarrassment for them, too. So we have to also teach our young boy that that just the reaction of our body yeah. because of that. So that when they can know, like, okay, the boundaries of, like, okay, this is getting too far, you know? Mm -hmm. so. I heard a sex therapist, Kristen Hobson, actually teach mm -hmm. about this the other day. And she was saying her son came to her dad or her husband, and he had an erection, and just straight as day, he's like, yeah, that's called an erection. That's when yeah. blood flows to your penis. You're going to have those all, all the time. The time. Yeah. Done. Boom. Normal. They know that what it me. is. Normal. Like, yeah. And he said, she said by doing that, she took away the shame too. So when it happens again, he's not like, I'm bad, I'm wrong. Yeah. Like, you're a boy, dude. That's going to happen for the rest of your life. Right. So it's Boundaries. just science. You I know? have a funny story with that. So my, <laughs> my son, who's now 10, but when he was little, he would get in the all the time, yeah. all the time. And he would, like, we were in the grocery store to be like, Mom, my penis is big again. And like, oh my gosh. like, just move on with the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it would happen all the time. Oh and I remember gosh. talking to my husband, because like, he was my first son. I'm like, what, what do we do about this? Like, and he would play with it all the time. And he's like, oh, look, it's big. I got it big in the tub. And I'm like, I don't know what to do about this. Husband, go in there and talk to yeah, him. My, hus husband my husband's thing. advice was just like that. He was like, just don't draw attention to it. Don't make a big deal out of it. He's like, it's going to continue to happen lots. It's just the male it's body. It's normal, and that means you're yeah. healthy. Yeah, yeah. So, he, so we did. We just let it go. Mm -hmm. And then eventually he stopped announcing it at the it. grocery store. Because yeah. <laughs> it was not cool anymore. Don't yeah. you love it? Yeah. You like yeah. to have people looking at you like, yep, that's a, that's a normal Tuesday here. I have to put in another prop for these, for these books. So the reason why I love these books so much is because it starts so naturally. Because we are talking about 
the kids ask the question, where do babies come from? Every single kid in the history yep. of humans yeah. have asked that question, right? So this first book asks that. That question, where where did I come from? How did I, and it shows a mom with a baby in her tummy. Like, it's so well done. And the pictures, and it talks about how loved you were. And you have a belly button because that's where you were attached to your mom. Mm. Like, it talks, it's so good. It talks about how you ate from your mom's breast, which is another thing yep. that you need to talk to your kids <laughs> about, right? Yeah. So that's that one. Then there's this other one, book two, where this actually talks about sex. It talks about getting married. It talks about boys and girls' bodies changes. Wow. And so the puberty to look forward to. And then you get married and you fall in love. It has like this wedding thing. Um, and then it talks about husbands and wives. It has a picture of them laying in bed. And it <laughs> says that they, they have this connection. And that's where sex is. And it does say, oh, look, I put it right here. He can fit his penis into her vagina. His semen flows inside her and their bodies feel good all over. They want to be alone during sex so they can think only of each other. This is the way babies are made. A husband can't make a baby by himself. A wife can't make a baby by herself. Um, but it's it's good. I was nervous when I read this because I was like, <laughs> I can't tell my kids. I can't say the penis goes in the vagina. Yes. But when I did, my kids are like, hmm. and then, but it was just a fact. Like they yeah. have to learn it from somewhere, right? And I love the context that this book puts together. Yeah. It walks them through their puberty, their changes. And my kids are like, I'm not going to like that. I'm like, you will one yeah. day. And when you fall in love and get married, it's all like this. It's so good, you guys. So that's so just level two. Rather, what about level three yeah. and four? Like what? I mean, I, maybe we haven't read. I know I haven't. Yet. I haven't so gotten one, to. So these are Christian-based books. We will put that out. It does mention God. So um, they are Christian-based. They're not any particular religion. They're just Christian-based. Yeah. Um, so this one, number three, is why God cares about sex. Ooh. So God's design for sex, um, and then it has some examples of stories like mom, dad, and kid, like. Um, dialogue between right. each other and then it has some questions to discuss like here's one when have you heard kids joke about sex mm. why do you think they do that mm. so then it gives you conversation topics with the kids um yeah it's it's great it talks and about to also say these books are just suggestions yeah, you can yeah. always personalize it to and yourself and there's a lot you of can, other books i've used yeah, too they get yeah. you personalize it you get it going you can read it yourself and be like this is what I, the approach i'm gonna take mm -hmm. it's yeah. just a guide to yeah. get you going so you don't have to open it and be like so I think that's what's important. So when we're teaching, we can read, 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 read. Then we, we know our children. Yep. We know our home. So we personalize it to how our kids would want to learn. Exactly. So, exactly. For me, I would rather have that really bonding moment with my child to teach them instead of them at seventh grade, little Joey's like, yeah, do you know what sex is? Like, you <laughs> that's how little Joey's going to do it. That's how little Joey's going to be Joey's teaching. Teach it. You know, yeah. and so like just to, to take control yeah. and be like, I, and I know that I have friends who are like, I'm so scared. Like, I was never given the talk, mm -hmm. so I have nothing to model after. Yeah. So learning from you guys has been helpful, reading books. And like, if yeah. you aren't, if you aren't confident yet and your hands are trembling, it's just okay. read the book it's mm -hmm. okay. and you'll become more confident. Yeah. And read it first. You don't that. have to straight go into like, I'm going to read, read this. It first. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Read it Please first. Read like it my first. husband did the other, like a month ago, he came to me because my husband grew up really didn't talk. Sex is sacred. Like you, we don't talk about it. You respect it. No, you're not saying vagina. So the, like he came to me because me, I was just like, that's not going to be me. I'm going to teach my kids. And he came to me, he's like, I understand the importance of teaching kids about sex, like starting young. And that was like, to me, I was like, yes, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you may have a partner that's like, hold up. And also having that conversation with your husband being like, because you two can read the book together. Like yeah. to be like, let's read it. Let's come with a plan. Yep. And then we'll move forward right. in that plan. And I want to just finalize this with just, because we did talk about education, is just also take a look at the curriculum that you're, if your kids are going to school, mm. take a look at the curriculum that they are teaching your kids because um, every state is different. Some states go way more in depth than other states. Some might go further than you feel comfortable. Some may not go as far as what you think. So as the parent, you need to be responsible to one to go, okay, this I want, this I don't want, this I will fill in, that kind of a thing. And you know, be advocates for your kids. And don't be afraid to tell your school if they're going too far, like I, that my kid will not be, like you, you are the parent and mm -hmm. you know you can make those decisions i know i had a, I, one of the reasons why we left california is because california is moving in a direction where they're teaching way too much for young to, to younger ages that we didn't feel it was appropriate and they weren't allowing parents to opt out oh, so wow. if you don't pay attention to what's going on in the education system you can have things happening that you don't even know about so mm -hmm. be advocates for your family 
And I think that, you know, your kids I are going to be off in a better place. I want Utah to bring it into the education. I think we've had, we, we yeah, California. Like, I've, like, uh, with limit, you know what I mean? I think I love that parents have to sign when I was in school. But it's not even in curriculum anymore. It's yeah, like, not at it's, all. It's wow. out. It's wow. been removed Which puts from a curriculum. more responsibility on us. Yeah, so we have to do mm -hmm. it. So we're not stuck into this conversation. Like, you know, our kids being like, what it, like wedding night like you yeah, know it's like just like night, yeah no, no, so we pulled yeah. our audience we pulled you guys on our instagram and the what was it there was like 700 Most of you people. said that you just you never had the talk you just figured it out on your own and the least amount of you said, said that your parent taught you you yeah. either figured it out on your own you learned it from school or you yes. never got the talk and then the least amount of you said you actually had a parent teach you yeah. let's change that you guys yes. Yes. and let's these books it. are a great way to start we can you know keep the conversation going because yeah. sex is a, a, important and we will continue this conversation yeah. because there's so much more to totally. talk about you but know the links and will be in the description box for anybody who's interested in those books. and comment with your resources we know yes. that you guys have some good resources too. tell us what your resources. can I leave yeah. you guys with the challenge yeah, yes. on the I think it would be so cool in 20 years that our kids <laughs> yes. can't ever say that they had the talk or conversation, that we are normalizing it so much and we are talking about it so frequently in our homes just... that there was never a sex talk. It was just something that was normal. Can no, I challenge you guys? I love with... that. I will take on that challenge. So <laughs> thank you for joining our conversation. Yeah, and if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification so that you don't miss our next episode. Are you ready for more? Click on the next video for more Brave Conversations. And if you have some Brave topics you'd like to discuss, leave your suggestions below. We'd love to hear from you. See you, See next, you next week. week. Hey, Brave Girl.